Hey guys, thanks for tuning back in to Upgrade Addiction. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I replaced the thermal paste on a Zotac 1080 Mini or a GTX 1080 with some liquid metal compound for some pretty good results. So what's gonna happen if we do that exact same thing to a Titan X? Okay, so first things first guys, let me clear this up. This is the Titan X Pascal, not the new Titan XP. And why do we wanna do this? Well, basically because the thermal throttling on Titan Xs is a big issue because of their blower style design or their, their reference cooler design. And I wanna see if doing this is going to help reduce the temperatures and make using the original cooler an actual viable option. So I'm gonna be using the Thermal Grizzly Conductor Nort, which is a liquid metal paste. So let's go ahead and run some tests to get our baseline and see where our starting point is as far as temperatures go. All right, so how are we gonna do this? What we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the same sort of principle we did back in the um, GTX 1080 video. We're gonna do two tests. We're gonna run it at stock and we're gonna run it at overclock settings. So I'm going to loop Unigen Heaven to put the card under load. I'm gonna use MSI Afterburner to keep track of the temperatures and perform the overclocking when I get there. And I'm also gonna use it to set the fan speed manually at 75% and just leave it there so that before and after the thermal paste is redone, the, uh, the fan speed variable is the same. So let's get on with it and find out what it does stock. All right guys, so we're back with the stock results. Uh, Unigen Heaven's been looping for about 20 minutes now. So as far as stock goes, this is what we got. So first of all, the ambient room temperature in here is 20 degrees and it will remain the same throughout the whole testing. So keep that in mind. Now the temperatures uh, peaked at 70, 71 degrees and seem to have plateaued there. So I think we've got our starting mark there. The core clock um, started off as high as 1843, but settled around 1747 megahertz, give or take 15. You can probably hear it buzzing away in the background there. The fans at 70% is fairly loud, um, or 75%. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to dial in a manual overclock on this thing and see how it responds to that. I think it's probably gonna get fairly toasty, but let's get on with that. And then as soon as we've dialed in the overclock and got the results, we'll do the thermal paste replacement and see how that goes. All right guys, so we're back with the overclock results on the stock paste. So what we saw here was uh, basically what I did was I put a plus 200 megahertz overclock on the core and a plus 250 megahertz overclock on the memory through Afterburner. And what that translated to was an actual core clock that ranged between 1974 and 2012 megahertz. The temperature jumped from 70 to 70 to 71 up to 79 degrees. So we've got a healthy bump there. Um, so I think now is a good a time to whip it out, put some uh, liquid metal on it, and uh, I'll take you through the process so you can see how that's done, and then we'll put it back in and see how it's benefited from that. So we'll catch you guys back here in a second.
All right, guys, so we're back. The thermal paste has been replaced. It's back in the system, looping heaven on the stock clocks, and this is what we're seeing. So the core uh, went as high as 1860 and as low as 1749, so just a touch higher on both the maximum and minimum clocks over the previous paste. The temperature has settled around 66, 67, so it's dropped four degrees from the stock paste. Um, obviously the fans are still at 75% and ambient still 20 degrees. So what we'll do now is we'll apply the overclock settings and see how well the temperatures act now when we've got the overclocked on. So let's do it and we'll see what happens. All right guys, we're back with the overclocked and final results. So how did it fare? Well, let's take a look. So the overall core clock uh, was about the same. I mean, it's the same overclock, so you'd expect that. Um, the temperatures were have settled in around 75 and every now and then it hits 76 so it's a it's a four degree drop from the stock paste uh, on the overclocked profile so yeah probably not as drastic as i was expecting or not as drastic as the gtx 1080 was but uh here's the thing what is holding this card back from cooling isn't the paste that's on it it's just the cooler design itself after all, you saw when we pulled it apart, it's only got a small aluminium stack and a vapor chamber, and that's all the heat dissipation area that it's got. So I think more than anything else, the cooling capacity is hindered by the cooler design and nothing else, regardless of what paste you put on there. I mean, we did get an improvement, but not as drastic as I would have liked. The overall factor, or the overruling factor is just the design of the cooler. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I need to give a big thank you and a huge shout out to Steven Steinlein, a buddy of mine who actually sent me his card. That's his card there. He's got two of them. He's gonna water cool them. But before he did that, he said, hey, take it apart, put some liquid metal on it, and see how it fares. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right, hold up there, guys. Um, there's a couple of thoughts that I actually um, wanted to put on. I'm going through editing the video and I'm realizing that there's some areas that I didn't probably touch on that I really wanted to. And, and thinking about it now, I just wanted to add this little bit extra in because I wouldn't have felt right um, putting it up without getting all my thoughts out there. Now, the first thing, I just want to talk more about the cooler. Um, yes, it's a damn good looking cooler. We know that. It's probably the best first party cooler going around, you know, as far as the looks go. But um, the cooling efficiency of it just isn't there. It's just not up to the task of cooling Nvidia's top-end graphics card, the Titan X. It just, it's just not up to the job of doing that. It can't dissipate the amount of heat that, that core generates. Um, so that leads me to, you know, raise a couple more questions. Are there any further tweaks that could be done to the, the reference cooler to make it more efficient or do a better job? Um, it is a redesign on the cards who knows probably not i mean it's really their trademark now to have that uh, have that style of of cooler you know it's instantly recognizable and, and it does look good but it's just it just doesn't have the efficiency or the ability to cool you know such a powerful core so that's that's um a bit of a concern wouldn't it be nice if there were add-in board partners allowed to touch the titan x and put their own coolers on like asus and msi gigabyte and whatnot nvidia don't allow that with the titan x they've, they've locked it down and you you know the th the add-in board partners aren't allowed to touch it or do anything with it so that's a real shame i mean imagine um Imagine the Titan X's if you could get third-party coolers or you know custom PCBs. You know that would be that would be nice. Um, I guess it's just it's no surprise that so many people water cool these cards because it's the only way that you're going to get the best out of it. You know it, it, because it's totally gimped by the by the standard cooler that's on it. But anyway, guys, thanks heaps for watching, and this time I'll definitely catch you in the next one. See you guys.